Good morning from the farmhouse. It is about 6 a.m. and I've been up since 4. My two-year-old Nathan, he usually gets me up at least once during the night. Um, oftentimes we'll spend the rest of the evening together on the couch and uh, that didn't happen last night. So I was kind of laying in bed twiddling my thumbs about 4 o'clock a.m. this morning and um, I thought I would go ahead and get up. I got my shower. I did a little bit of online work and now I thought it would be a good morning for some cake donuts. So come make cake donuts with me this morning. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start with one cup of sugar. And then we need four teaspoons of baking powder. I have got my adjustable Pampered Chef tablespoon here. So I'm gonna do two teaspoons at a time. Really like this thing. So there's our four teaspoons of baking powder. And then I'm going to do one and a half teaspoons of salt. Okay. And then we need a half teaspoon of nutmeg. stir that together. All right, next we're going to go ahead and crack two eggs into this. And add that together. And as the egg starts to soak up the dried ingredients, we're going to add a quarter cup of melted butter. And continue stirring. Okay. Once that's mixed in, we're just ready for our milk and our flour. So we are going to do four cups of flour. And one cup of milk. So here's the finished product. As you can see, it's a little bit sticky yet, so we're gonna end up adding more flour to this. Now you can do one of two things. You can either go ahead and roll out now, and if you do that, you'll end up adding more flour to compensate for the stickiness of this so you can actually work the dough. Or you can put it in the refrigerator for a couple of hours, and that will help um, roll it out as well. And you won't have to add quite as much flour if you do that. Um, I usually do not chill the dough because I have got people coming downstairs in just a little bit that are going to be looking for some donuts. So in true Kelly form, we are not going to chill this dough today, but know that that is an option. Okay, before I start rolling these out, I'm going to go ahead and get my oil heating up in my cast iron pan. You do not need to use cast iron, um, but I think it does cook them a little bit better. So I've got on a five. When this cast iron heats up, I will turn this down to probably about a four, four and a half. And I'm just going to put a nice little covering of oil in there, maybe about a quarter to a half inch, half inch deep. Okay, so we are ready to roll out our donuts. I am going to put a decent amount of flour on the counter. You're going to want to go a little bit heavy on this because you're essentially going to be kneading the dough until it's the right consistency to roll out. All right, I'm just going to plop my dough in the center of this flour. Like I said before, as you can see, this is very sticky you're not going to be, rolled, be able to roll it out like it is. So I've got flour on the bottom of the counter, of course, and now I'm going to flour the top of it. Well, and I'm going to just pat it out a little bit. 
and I'm gonna work the dough a little bit. You don't wanna overwork it, right? Because then it will make the dough tough. But just kinda of come through here and do some folding to incorporate some of that flour. You can do this in the bowl as well if you wanna just add maybe a quarter cup to a half a cup at a time. But doing it on the counter like this does allow you to feel when you've got the right amount of flour so that you're not over adding. Okay, so I think that's probably good. Now, I am going to kind of fold this back into a ball. I'm gonna lift it up and it's very important that you make sure that the counter is kind of recoated with flour so that it doesn't stick when you roll it out. All right, well, let's go ahead and roll. This is a very soft dough, so you do not need to press too much. Because once again, the, the softer you can keep this dough, the fluffier your donuts are gonna be. Because these are cake donuts and not yeast risen donuts, they can get too dense. Okay. Now, you do not want this dough so thin um, that it's gonna be like you're eating wafers after you fry them. However, you do want it um, thin enough. I think I've got it about a quarter inch here. You do want it a little bit thin because the baking pattern there will help it rise as you bake. It will, it will get big, so you don't wanna make it too thin. This is my, um, this is my mother-in-law's donut cutter. So that's kind of fun to use. And you just cut the first time, and then make sure you're dipping in flour every one or two times after that so it doesn't stick. Now I like to remove all the outside edges of this excess dough. It just makes it easier to get the donuts up off the counter and into the frying pan. And of course put all that aside in one big pile because we're going to re keep re-rolling this dough until it's all used up into donuts. Okay, to determine if your um, oil is hot, you can do a couple different things. I've seen people stick a chopstick in the oil and see if it sizzles. I can usually just tell by holding my hand above the heat to see if it's hot enough. Um, another thing that I often do is take a little tiny piece of dough and put it in there. And if it's a sizzling, you're ready to go. You don't want to put your donuts in before that oil is hot or they're just going to be sitting there soaking up the oil. You really want it to sizzle when you put them in. So let's put some donuts in. Okay, so for most of these, you're gonna be able to just gently reach down and pick them up. Be careful, um, don't handle them too much because they are droopy and they're either gonna to stick to your hands or fall off of your hands if you hold them like this. So be gentle with them. Um, some of them, however, as you get in towards the middle where there was more rolling out done, will stick a little bit. All you need to do is flour you up a spatula like this and just slide up under them real quick like that. Put them into your hand. Get the excess flour off, separate the donut hole, and you're ready to put in the pan. Okay, my two flipper tools that I usually use are a longish fork and a pair of tongs. Um, the fork I just use to flip over the donuts. You can see what color they need to be all red, what color they need to be. Just go through and flip over your donuts when they've got that pretty color to them. 
And then I have better luck flipping the donut holes with these tongs. You can see a lot of them flipped over with my fork when I was doing the big donuts. But that's how I flip them. Okay, so when the donuts are about the right color, that golden brown that you want, we're just gonna hold it above the pan and let it drip for a second. And then we're gonna transfer it to a large baking sheet that has a rack on top of it. That just lets some of the grease come off. Okay, I just put my third batch in the oil. And so my pan over here is getting full. So what I like to do is have a plate and a bowl off to the side. And um, these were the first, this was the first batch I did up here. So I will just simply come through and start stacking up donuts on a plate. And you guessed it, the bowl is for the donut holes. When you get down to another, like the last few donuts um, in your first rollout, I would recommend going ahead and getting ready for your second rollout. So I transferred those donuts to the other counter, um, reflowered my counter that where I'm rolling out at. You don't have to flower as much this time and reshape my dough into a ball. I'm ready to roll out again. I am down to one more batch of donuts after this through the oil, but you can see how low my oil is getting. If I was making a double batch or if I hadn't added enough oil in the beginning, this is when I would be adding more oil. So definitely keep your oil out while you're doing this process, while you're cooking these donuts, because you may have to add oil at some point. When I get down to my last bit of dough, I just try to roll it out and shape one more donut, and then I will break off pieces of this and shape it into little donut holes by hand for the kids. Cleanup tip. When you're dealing with flour, definitely take the excess off the counter and scrape any dough off putting that in the trash can and then washing. Thank me later, it'll be less scrubbing for you. Okay, I am gonna glaze these cake donuts today. Sometimes we do powdered sugar donuts and sometimes we do cinnamon sugar. To do powdered sugar, you just put some powdered sugar into a gallon sized bag and you shake the donuts when they are still warm, even a little bit oily helps. Um, to do cinnamon sugar, you just make yourself up a cinnamon sugar mixture. Um, you can do probably about a cup of sugar to uh, maybe a tablespoon or so of cinnamon, depending on how much cinnamon you like. Uh, make sure that that's mixed really well, and then while the donuts are still warm, um, even. Okay, well my video cut out while I was making the glaze. So long story short, I used a whole bag of powdered sugar, um, and then you just add water and whisk. Um, it's literally just powdered sugar and water. Um, when you're adding the water, make sure you add little bits at a time, because when you get down to the end, um, when you're mixed, if you get your mixture close to where it's about the right consistency, you literally need to be adding drops if it's too thick. But this is the consistency that I like. If it's too thin, it will run right off the donuts. If it's too thick, it will take a long time to run off and a long time to dry. So I like mine about this consistency to where it's still sticking to the whisk a little bit, but it's running off freely. So it's fairly thick, like there's resistance there when I'm whisking but that's about how I like it. So let's go ahead and glaze some donuts. Okay, so all I do is drop a donut in, submerge and flip in the glaze, drip it in the bowl a little bit, and then come over here. That's pretty much it. When I'm doing the cake or the donut holes, um, I do put like three or four or five in there at a time, coat them and bring them out. And then my setup for glazing is the same as the drip drying for the oil. I just have a baking rack on top of a baking pan. And then I will actually reuse the glaze. So when I run out or I run out of room before I do the next batch, I will spatula off this um, glaze on the bottom of the pan here and back into my bowl. Sometimes when you do that, you do have to, it will thicken it a little bit as you dip, um, and it's just as the air dries. And so I will add a little bit of water, like I said before, very little bit, like literal drops of water, just to make sure my mixture isn't getting too thick. But that's how we glaze them. And then you just let them air dry. Um, you can eat them right now, they're just really messy. Um, but the kiddos, it's, it's a little after seven right now. My kids will be coming downstairs probably pretty soon. We watched a movie last night. We watched Chronicles of Narnia, had a bit of a movie night. So they went to bed a little bit later than they usually do. But so they'll be getting up a, probably a little bit later. But um, 
they'll be excited for donuts when they come downstairs. Nathan, look. <gasps> What's for breakfast? <laughs> Is it donuts for breakfast? <laughs> Must get up. Can you pass Bobby a plate too? Just one? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you more awake now? <laughs> Are you happy about the donuts? Okay. <laughs> video and about more video and about more video <laughs> it'll be funny <laughs> <laughs>